Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and today we're heading back to SeaWorld San Antonio for our final review in this park series for SeaWorld San Antonio because today we're going to be reviewing the newest roller coaster at the park and the tallest, fastest, and longest wooden coaster in all of Texas. That's right, Texas Stingray. So Texas Stingray opened in early 2020, I know kind of a cursed opening, but being one of maybe three or four coasters to successfully open in its opening year, it has been looked quite highly upon and I'm sure it was a nice bright spot in Southern Texas, at least for coaster enthusiasts. But this coaster constructed in 2019 by Great Coasters International or GCI is the tallest, fastest, and longest wooden coaster in the entire state. Now, interestingly enough, those record holders prior in Texas were converted to hybrid coasters, meaning that they still have that same wooden support structure, but they now have a steel track. The funny thing is about Texas Stingray, on the other hand, is the fact that its supports are steel and its track is wood. So technically you could classify Texas Stingray as a hybrid coaster as well, but since the track is wooden, we still would consider it a wooden coaster. Now enough talking about technicalities and what type of coaster it is, let's find out how to get there. So if you've seen the other reviews in this park series, you would know at SeaWorld San Antonio, there are three main parks. So once you enter in underneath the stained glass arch and through security, on your left, you'll see Discovery Point. In front of you will be Aquatica and to your right will be proper SeaWorld San Antonio and its full park. You wanna head to that right hand side past the wave sign. And once you enter the park, there are realistically two ways to get to Texas Stingray because it's at the very back of this park. And SeaWorld San Antonio's entire layout is pretty much a giant oval. So realistically head down the main pathway on the left until you reach that wooden coaster or head down the main pathway on the right. Now, if you're on the left, you wanna pass Steel Eel, pass Wave Breaker and go across a bridge before reaching Texas Stingray. And on your right, you'll pass through Sesame Street, go right by Journey to Atlantis and the Orca Stadium before getting over to Texas Stingray. Once you've made it all the way to this brand new coaster, you'll notice it's nicely made entrance sign. Now this entrance sign is realistically just the logo on some metal, but it does look good nonetheless. Just to the right of that will be the entrance and the main entrance pathway will be on the left path while the quick queue entrance is on the right path. But do make sure you put your belongings bigger than a phone or a wallet and keys in the provided lockers just to the right hand side of the entrance because realistically you won't be able to put them in the station while you ride. But going back to the main entrance queue, you'll be meted by a couple of trees and little bushes spread throughout this area while you twist and turn back and forth in this very interesting curving pathway that will eventually take you down a small hill and underneath the track of the coaster itself once it exits the station. Now, if you cannot do stairs, the main queue is definitely not gonna be the route you wanna take. And same with the quick queue, however, because there are stairs that lead underneath the track and then up again. So you will need to use stairs in the main and quick queues. So do keep that in mind. And if you can't do stairs, of course, you can apply for an ADA pass. But this is where the quick queue actually meets up with the station staircase, and that's where you'll be let on the ride if you're on quick queue. But for the standard queue, it leads up into a giant group of switchbacks underneath some steel roofing, which eventually will lead to some more curvy pathing that gives you some awesome views of the coaster. Now, you could definitely tell this ride is brand new just by its queue alone. And honestly, it feels like their budget was quite low for the queue itself. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that there are roofs over the queues and even fans to cool you down on those hot Texan days. But with everything being raw wood or just painted one color, I can't help but think they either could have taken another couple of weeks or put in just that little extra bit of money to make it look a little nicer. 
Now soon you'll be greeted by a weird winding pathway made of wood, which is still covered thankfully, before you meet up with the quick queue to the stairs to the station. Once you head up these stairs, you'll be greeted with 12 separate rows and even more blaring country music before you take your seat. So once you've taken your seat, you will notice that there is just a lap bar and some nice padding on the seats. Now do keep in mind these trains are only two seats wide, so if you have a party of bigger than two, you're going to be taking up more than one row. But before I dive into the seat itself, I will mention that if you have ridden pretty much any other GCI wooden coaster like Mystic Timbers at Kings Island, Apocalypse at Six Flags Magic Mountain, or Gold Striker at California's Great America, you would know these trains and seats very well. But for those who have not experienced these types of seats and this type of coaster, these seats are quite encompassing on all sides and offer some nice padding. So you'll have a comfortable ride experience even though it's a wooden coaster and it might be a little bumpier than you used to. In addition to this, the lap bar does come in between your legs but is curved to give you more of a comfortable experience. And outside of that, your legs will have adequate room to move around a little bit. And in brief, these seats are comfortable enough to sit in for quite a long time and give you the support needed to stay upright during your experience. Now, this leads us out of the station and ready to ride the tallest, fastest, and longest wooden coaster in Texas. Immediately as you head out of the station, you'll make a right downward turn toward the lift hill of the tallest wooden coaster in Texas. This lift hill will take quite a while to get up to its 96 foot tall height and can give you a beautiful view of the surrounding area and specifically the rest of the layout you're about to encounter. What I thought was an interesting detail heading up the lift hill though, is you can still hear that blaring country music due to speakers all along this section of track, which I thought was a nice touch. Soon enough, you'll be taking a little dip and another right turn, which if you're in the back, will push you to the side a little bit before encountering the crazy 100 foot drop. This drop isn't the steepest thing ever, but if you're in the back, because you've already picked up a little bit of speed from that dip off the lift hill, you will get some insane airtime pushing you out of your seat and making you feel weightless all the way down the drop. Now in the front, that's not the case, but that's okay. You've got plenty of airtime lined up for you later in the ride. Now, interestingly enough, this is one of GCI's first straight drops. And I gotta say, it performed incredibly well, especially in the back row. And in the back row, it's probably my favorite moment of the entire ride. Now, once you valley out on the bottom of this drop, this is where your picture will be taken with the on-ride camera. So make sure to pose. Immediately after this, you'll head underneath some of the structure above you as you head straight back up into one of the tallest hills on the ride that at the very top of it will give you a tiny bit of airtime, especially if you're at the front of the train. Now in the back, this is just kind of a transition into a right banking turn, but in the front, it is a little more exciting. Immediately after this, you'll be diving to the right and picking up more of that speed, bringing you back to near 55 miles an hour, which is the top speed on this roller coaster, before heading straight back up into another hill and making a big right turn with those awkward transitions from hill to turn both times. Now these transitions, if you're in the front, will give you a little bit of weightlessness, not too much, but it's enough to kind of push you out of your seat a little bit. Now in the back, that doesn't really happen nearly as much on this coaster at least, but it's still an interesting experience nonetheless. Now after doing the same motion twice in a row, you'll make a transition going to the left this time, crossing over some of the track you just passed. This left turn leads into another downward hill that just keeps your speed up on the ride. Soon you'll flatten out before diving back downward, which I think is a really great moment of airtime, especially in the back row. And it was a nice unexpected moment of weightlessness that added a little bit of flair to this straight section. Soon after you'll be twisting to the left yet again before encountering what we like to call an off axis airtime hill, meaning you enter this hill 
twisting to one side and exit the hill twisting another. Now in the back, this is an especially good moment and it flings you around a little bit. And I would definitely say this is the most picturesque moment of the ride that you can see from the queue. Immediately after that is one of my favorite sequences on this entire ride, where after encountering that airtime hill, you bank to the right and hit another airtime hill that goes immediately under the lift hill and drop structure, giving you an awesome hand chopper moment where it feels like your hands might be chopped off by the supports, even though that's technically not possible. Soon after that, you'll be diving to the left. And while you're still banking left, you'll stop turning and get a weird wave turn or pop of airtime sideways, which I think is a really cool moment in any row. But while you're still banking left, you'll start to turn again and encounter some more little pops of airtime before twisting to the left, making a giant U-turn and heading back toward the structure that you just passed under. But to me, this is really where the ride shines in its second half, because personally, I do feel like the first half is just a lot of big turns, which doesn't offer too many exciting factors. But once you pass under that lift hill structure, it feels more twisting, varied, and more full of airtime that I would definitely say the second half is my favorite half of the ride. But this is when you encounter this weird twisting drop, which I would say is another great moment on this coaster. You twist to the left and then immediately to the right, which brings you to one of the best airtime moments on the entire coaster and probably my favorite moment in the front row. After that quick S curve underneath the structure, you find yourself getting an awesome pop of airtime before entering a tunnel, which I think is a really cool hand chopper moment with the airtime included. I think this is probably my favorite moment in the front row. And honestly, one of my favorite moments in the back row. Soon after that, you'll be twisting in the tunnel just to the left before encountering some more slight airtime hills and making a giant right hand turn into the brake run. Once you've sat in the brake run for a little while and let the train in front of you or technically behind you go out of the station, this is when you'll re-enter and grab your belongings out of the lockers once you've left. So Texas Stingray, the tallest, fastest, and longest wooden coaster in Texas. Now, is it menacingly tall? No. Menacingly fast? No. And it's just over 3,000 feet of track. Doesn't feel like the longest coaster in the world. But I will say this coaster is still a lot of fun. I know I mentioned a lot of great moments talking throughout the layout, and I do think there are a lot of great moments but everything in between just kind of feels like you're meandering or just making a big turn. But one thing I do want to mention is yes, while this is a wooden coaster, you didn't hear me mention anything about roughness during the experience. And that's because it really isn't rough at all, at least as far as wooden coasters go. Of course, you have that awkward shake that wooden coasters are known for throughout the layout, and there's nothing you can do about that. And outside of maybe a couple of moments where you might shift a little bit to one side or the other, this wooden coaster, at least in its opening year, was one of the smoothest wooden coasters I can ever recall riding. And I might even say it is the smoothest wooden coaster I've ridden. Now that might change in the years to come because that's just how wooden coasters operate. After multiple years of operation, the track will start to wear down a little bit and will make the experience a little bit rougher. But at least for the next couple of years, it will continue to be one of the smoothest wooden coasters I can think of, at least in the United States. But for me personally, it not being too rough honestly made it a little less interesting, which I know sounds kind of counterintuitive. I want things to be the smoothest possible, right? Well, with wooden coasters, I wouldn't mind a little bit of extra shakiness. That's what makes them unique in comparison to steel coasters. But I will say since it is smoother, it's a lot easier to ride for younger enthusiasts or people that are a little more scared of roller coasters in general. So while yes, this is the biggest coaster of its kind in Texas, it still is not nearly as intense as some of the other coasters in the park. 
One more thing I also wanted to mention just in general is later in the day, this ride will give you better experiences. Now I got to ride this coaster a good three, four or five times. And whenever I rode it early in the day, it felt kind of sluggish and slow throughout its layout. And later in the day, it felt more relentless, which I enjoyed a heck of a lot more. So I will say if you want a better experience, try and ride towards the end of the night when the track and train is warmed up a little bit and at least feels like it's going faster. But it's completely okay if you can only ride this in midday because it'll still offer a really fun ride. So in short, Texas Stingray is ridiculously smooth, at least for a wooden coaster. The first half to me seems a little lackluster. The second half gives me what I love, but not enough of it, and is not exactly as intense as some of the other roller coasters you can experience at SeaWorld San Antonio. But guess what? I still absolutely love this ride. I thought it was a heck of a lot of fun, and is honestly great for most people. Sure, it's not great for all ages, like Wavebreaker just across the way. And it's not the best for thrill seekers necessarily, like Great White or maybe even Steel Eel. But I feel it's a middle ground. And honestly, I could see some people that are more afraid to try out bigger and badder rides taking on this coaster before experiencing loops or even taller and faster coasters like Steel Eel or maybe some of the coasters at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, like Iron Rattler or Wonder Woman. So with that, let's get to my ratings. And if you didn't know, I have a really unorthodox rating system. I give a ski slope rating, just letting you know what I think someone's experience level in riding coasters should be before taking on this ride in particular. A five star rating for intensity and fun and of course an overall score out of 10, at least in my personal thoughts. So let's start with that ski slope rating. And honestly, I thought about it quite a bit. I was split between a blue square and a black diamond, but in the end of the day, I went with the blue square, meaning you should be at least an intermediate rider to take on this ride. So at the park specifically, ride Journey to Atlantis or Grovers, and specifically Wavebreaker the Rescue Coaster before taking on Texas Stingray, and I would definitely take on Texas Stingray before going to Great White or even Steel Eel. Now that's not to say it's not intense at all. For my intensity rating, I'm gonna give it three out of five stars, which is actually quite intense, especially compared to most of the coasters at the park, but I do still think it's something that most people could take on and not think it was too crazy, nauseating, or rough. Now, in terms of fun, I'm also going to give this ride a three-star rating. Now, that's not to say it's not fun. It is actually quite a bit of fun, especially for someone who hasn't been on a bigger or faster wooden coaster, or maybe even a more intense wooden coaster. But I will say it's probably my favorite ride to just keep getting back in line and riding over and over again, just because it's not the most intense thing, but it also offers enough fun to make it enjoyable to re-ride over and over again. Now this moves us to the overall score out of 10. And for me personally, I gotta say this is an eight out of 10, which is not a bad score at all. I think it's awesome. And as far as wooden coasters go, it is definitely in the top half of wooden coasters I've been on. It's still a heck of a lot of fun. I just personally don't see it as the best wooden coaster I've ever been on. But at least out of all the wooden coasters I've been on in Texas, it's easily my favorite. But then again, I haven't ridden any other wooden coasters in Texas. But what do you guys think of Texas Stingray? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Is my opinion the worst opinion ever? Make sure to let me know. And of course, make sure to subscribe for my full list ranking in the next portion of this series of reviews where I'm gonna be talking about every single coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio, ranked, rated, and reviewed all in under one minute for each coaster. And of course, once we finish that, we're gonna move on to the next park, which is... And I'm sure you guys are gonna be really excited to head back to reviewing coasters there. But I wanted to say thank you all so, so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure to go subscribe to our second channel too, where my brother and I are playing some video games. But until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.